Hey everyone, it's Sammy from Push Square, and I've spent the past week playing through Detroit Become Human and then playing through it again. Now I'm going to get into my impressions in this video, but I did just want to point out that this review is spoiler free. There is some footage from the game um, captured on a PS4 Pro, but I've tried to keep it quite minimum um, so it doesn't ruin anything in the final game for you. Um, before I get into my review, also do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And with that said, let's review Detroit. Hello, welcome to the Detroit experience. I'm an android and I'll be your hostess. So despite its all new setting and story, Detroit Become Human is unlikely to surprise Quantic Dream fans. Uh, while this narrative adventure sticks closer to the blueprint established by PlayStation 3 exclusive Heavy Rain, it shares the same slice of life pacing as its contemporaries, giving you a long, hard look at the lives of its trio of near future protagonists. Now the game is pitched against a 2038 American backdrop, uh, where the creation of cyborgs has contributed heavily to the country's gross domestic product at the expense of its working class, and the sci-fi plot attempts to explore the consequences of this technological advancement by observing people from all walks of life, including the so-called androids themselves. Now, for me, this is a disappointingly unoriginal premise for the Parisian developer because we've already seen games like Nier Automata tackle similar themes on the PlayStation 4 before, but there's a definite logic to the title's high-tech world that gives it a real air of believability, even if topics like unemployment and slavery seem eye-rollingly obvious from afar. Now the game's three leads all feed into the fiction in different ways. Um, Kara's story explores the concept of motherhood as she breaks free from her programmed role as a housemaid to go on the run with a little girl. Marcus examines the upper class as he's imbued with essential values by his artist owner, which ignites his decision to lead an uprising. And meanwhile Connor is a detective designed to investigate so-called deviants. Now the concept of deviance is one that's explored right throughout the game as the three characters' unique stories intertwine. As with previous Quantic Dream games, the way the plot progresses comes down to the decisions that you make, and while it does occasionally cheat with some outcomes, there are many, many more variables to consider than in Beyond Two Souls. This means ultimately that leads can die, and the story simply adapts to that. There are occasions where the finality of an outcome may not be quite as firm as you'd expect, but there are others where you'll simply wave goodbye to a protagonist for good. While it's maybe not quite as malleable as some may still anticipate, it runs rings around the likes of Life is Strange, with the sheer array of variables on display. But this does come at a cost, as the story wrestles with its many branching paths, battling desperately to get its message across. Ultimately, with so many potential outcomes and alternative options to accommodate, it lacks the consistency of a more linear story. It's similar to the way that a choose-your-own-adventure novel can be rougher than one that you read from cover to cover. And it doesn't help that the entire storyline is built around one narrative oversight that I really struggled to suspend my disbelief over. Uh, without spoiling too much, the plot centres on the idea of deviant androids trying to integrate themselves in society, but with many of the models sharing the same facial features, it's hard to believe that any of these cyborgs could ever truly disguise themselves among humans. That's not to say that it's all bad though, as there are a series of high points right throughout the story. Uh, Connor's relationship with his partner, a kind of down-on-his-luck detective played by Clancy Brown, injects some much-needed comedy into proceedings, and there are a handful of excellent sequences involving Kara and her adopted child, including one where you need to find shelter for the night. Now, divisive director David Cage still does struggle to settle upon any one genre, segueing from horror to sci-fi to action, although the whole affair is much more consistent than the cumbersome Beyond Two Souls. The acting's better across the board too, uh, there's no standout performer like Ellen Page to pull up trees, but virtually everyone, including the supporting cast, puts in a decent shift with a slightly less wobbly script. And look, special mention must be paid to the presentation, which is absolutely absurd. The character models are insanely detailed and incredibly animated, even highlighting like the uncanny valley of the otherwise lifelike androids in comparison to their human counterparts. 
It's the sets that really steal the show though, they may be limiting and claustrophobic but they're absolutely bursting with detail. And they're interactive too with the gesture based controls and thought bubbles from previous Quantic Dream games returning to give you a means to engage with the world. There are less of the on rails QTE sequences from past games with the title instead giving you a little more freedom during moments of intense action allowing you to make your own mistakes. While it's certainly not a mechanically dense game in the slightest, the developer does mix things up. Uh, so Connor's detective sequences see you collecting evidence and recreating crimes, while Marcus will occasionally have to compute plans of approach based upon what certain circumstances require. The user interface throughout is cleverly integrated into the world itself, which is another really great touch. And to be fair, the entire game feels really well put together. Uh, you can replay previous chapters from specific checkpoints, allowing you to explore all of the permutations. Different decisions are logged in flowcharts, which can be compared with the rest of the world, and you'll also earn points for each new thing that you do in the game, which can then be spent on bonus content, including some short stories. Perhaps most impressive of all though is the menu screen which is anchored by an android who will periodically ask you questions and comment on the things that you do. If you play on a Friday night for example, the robot will actually acknowledge that and commend you on your decision to begin your weekend with the game. It's a little thing but it all helps sell the fiction. So ultimately Detroit Become Human is vintage Quantic Dream, uh, it delivers a multifaceted choose your own adventure that's both ambitious and somewhat of an acquired taste. It's clear that remarkable attention to detail has been poured into the title's vision of the near future which makes it harder to suspend disbelief over some of its smaller narrative oversights. The game huffs and puffs but it never really brings anything new to its core theme of androids awakening to human emotions and yet despite its relative familiarity it's an impressively replayable interactive story with a frightening number of variables of which there's nothing else quite like. But let me know what you think about Detroit Become Human in the comment section below. If you've got any questions about the game, I'll try to answer them. Um, are you going to pick it up when it launches? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Um, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Your meal contains 1.4 times the recommended daily intake of calories and twice the cholesterol level. You shouldn't eat that. Everybody's got to die of something. <laughs>